Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. I've titled this message, Praying for Divine Intervention. So we're going to, I want you to think of some things that you need prayer for, because we're going to pray together for divine intervention, for a divine rescue of someone or something in your life. Amen? Amen. So be thinking about that as we read through this story uh, in the book of Acts. We're in chapter 12. And we're going to be in verse 1. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword, which actually means at this time to be beheaded. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, these were people who did not believe in Christ, he also arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. We see here in the scripture that James, the brother of John, also the son of Zebedee, one of the fishermen, also known as the three, Peter, James, and John, who were close to Jesus, unfortunately, he was arrested and he was beheaded for his faith in Christ. Persecution, once again, had hit the church in Jerusalem. And when Herod saw how much this pleased the people who were against the church, the Jews at this time, he decided to arrest the leader, so to say, of the church, Apostle Peter. But he arrested him during the Passover and during a feast of unleavened bread, which lasted seven days. And on the eighth day, Passover would take place. And so out of fear of uh, inciting some kind of desecration of the holiday by actually killing a Jew during the holiday, he decided to wait and put him in prison and wait for Passover to be over. He wanted to keep the favor of the Jews on his side. He was a people pleaser of the Jews, and he wanted them to continue to like him. So he decided not to do that during the Passover celebration. Well, to keep Peter in prison, because maybe he heard about Acts chapter 5, when Peter was broken out of prison before by an angel. Peter's angel works overtime, by the way. He heard that, and so he assigned four soldiers for every six hours to, to look after him. And so two soldiers would be chained to him, and two soldiers would watch the door. Well, this didn't look good for Peter because Peter just learned of James being beheaded. So obviously he would be next after the Passover celebration. But what, but what Peter may not have known and what the enemy didn't know is that a church was praying. You could say that this sermon is really about corporate prayer and how the whole church should come together and pray for needs like this. So let's go to verse 6. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep. Well, that's interesting. Sound asleep. Fast asleep. Not afraid. Wow. That's courage. That's holy confidence in God. That's faith. Amen? Amen. He was fastened with two, two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. And suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. By the way, if you ever feel that in the middle of the night, it could be that you're being prompted to pray. It says here, And the chains fell off his wrists, then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals, and he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, and the, uh, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to an iron gate leading to the city, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street, and then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true. I'm not dreaming here. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, 
He went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. John Mark is actually the author of the Gospel of Mark. Okay? And his mother was pretty wealthy here, had a home in this area, and they were all together praying. He knocked at the door in the, in the gate, so there's a door built into the gate, and a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. Can you imagine being Peter? Like, hey, hey, wait, wait, hey, come back. Don't go open the gate. Okay. You're out of your mind, they said. When she assist- insisted, they decided it must be his angel. Let me stop for a moment. Did you know that every believer has an angel assigned to them according to Scripture? Hebrews 1.14 says, Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit eternal life or salvation. So you have an angel as a believer of the Lord, someone who's trusted in Christ for salvation. There is an angel protecting you and looking after you. Yeah. I do hope that that helps you sleep a little bit better tonight or drive a little safer and better tonight or today and all these things. That way you're not making your angel work overtime. Yeah. But Jewish tradition actually believed that the angel looked like the person. Now, there's no biblical backing for that, and I would say, let's not go down that path. It's not necessary. But they actually thought that maybe it was his angel, because that's what they believed, that the angel would look like Peter. Now, it's interesting that Luke would add this in the text. He's actually showing us a little bit of their weak faith in their prayers. Let me explain. He's actually exposing that they didn't believe he was going to be rescued, that he already died, that it must be his angel coming instead. Or it could just mean that his angel is advocating for him at the gate. There's different views on this. But it is possible that Luke is showing them that, hey, while they were praying earnestly, maybe they weren't praying for his salvation from prison. Maybe they prayed that he would suffer well. It's, there's a lot of chances here. There's a lot of different things and views of this of what it could be. Either way, they didn't believe that he was actually at the door. So here they are praying earnestly, but Luke shows sometimes we do lack faith when we pray. And sometimes we can't believe that it actually happened. What? I, there was actually a miracle or I was actually healed? Yes. Sometimes it can take time to click. So meanwhile, what is Peter doing? He doesn't want to be on the road. Peter continued knocking. Hello, come back. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down. He told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James, another James, this is the half-brother of Jesus, the one who wrote the book of James. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said. And then he went to another place. So he needed to get out of the city, and he went and hid in another place. At dawn, there was great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Herod Agrippa ordered a thorough search for him when he couldn't be found. Herod in, in, uh, interrogated the guards and sentenced them to death. Afterward, Herod left Judea to stay in Caesarea for a while. So praise God. They are praying and God answers their prayers in a way maybe they weren't even praying for. God sends an angel and sets Peter free from prison. Do you believe in divine intervention? Yeah, amen. There's a word called intercession, and intercession is to, to intercede or to pray fervently for people to give your whole self into prayer and pray for long periods of time until there's a breakthrough or there's some kind of answer to that prayer. And so they were interceding on behalf of Peter and the church as a whole, and they saw a miracle take place because there's no way in human ability that that would take place, that that would happen. Now, verse 20 says this, and this is what Luke does. This is further on. This is fast-forwarding. Luke wants us to see what happened to the king at at that time who was overseeing this whole situation. 
Now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, so they sent a delegation to make peace with him because their cities were dependent upon Herod's country for food. The delegates won the support of Blastus, Herod's personal assistant, and an appointment with Herod was granted. When the day arrived, Herod put on his royal robe, sat on his throne, and made a speech to them. The people gave him a great ovation, shouting, It's the voice of a god, not of man. Uh Uh-oh. That's not good. Instantly, an angel of the Lord struck Herod with a sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving the glory to God. So he was consumed with worms and died. And they believe that took about four to five days. So he was in agony for quite some time, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian. Meanwhile, the word of God continued to spread and there were many new believers. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission to Jerusalem, remember last week we learned that they were going to take a love offering, a gift of money to help the church in Jerusalem. They did that. They returned taking John Mark with them on their journeys back to Antioch, where we were last week in our story. We learned from Herod that we should never take the praise of man as if we're some God. That we should remain humble and give all glory to God. Amen. And I just want to say this, that if you have eyes today or you have legs or you have feet or you have energy or you have skills and abilities, you need to know something. They all came from God. Amen. Amen. Too often we say we did it or I did it. And sure, you applied yourself to the task, but you wouldn't even be alive. You wouldn't have oxygen in your lungs if it wasn't for the grace of God. All glory goes to God. Amen. As many times as the enemy wants to stop the church from spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, he continues to fail. Once again, the word of God spread dramatically and many new people became believers in Jerusalem because of this. It's just a powerful reminder that God's church is is going to prevail and is prevailing even today. In the midst of how dark it can be, how hard it can be, the church of Jesus Christ will not be stopped. We will continue to spread the good news of Jesus. It's an important reminder too as well that it takes the body of Christ to do these things, whether it's praying or whether it's being like Barnabas and Saul and John Mark or Rhoda who opens doors for people, whatever it may be, it takes the body of Christ to see that forward. Amen. Amen. Quick commercial. We may hear some loud bangs and everything because of the air show. Just a quick heads up on that. I was there yesterday. Scared. I thought I jumped out of my body at one point because <laughs> walking by some explosions, didn't see them coming. It was funny. Everyone jumped, not just me. I'm not the scaredy cat, okay? I want to apply three things, and then we're going to jump into prayer again. We're going to worship, and we're going to pray again. So remember, what do you need to pray about that needs a divine breakthrough? Um, it needs a divine rescue. It could be a person. It could be yourself. It could be a thing, a situation. So first of all, number one from our story, here's, here's what we know. We can trust and rest in God's divine will. There was no arguing and there was no complaining why James was killed, but Peter was spared. We need to trust God's will. We don't know why God does spare some and then he doesn't spare others. We're not God, but we are called to trust God. It is the great mystery of why God heals some and doesn't heal some why God saves some missionaries and why God allows some missionaries to pass away. I don't recall the name or the story of this missionary completely, but there was a man who was doing great things for the Lord and he was on a little vacation with his family and he's walking up a hill to get to a waterfall and the ground gave out and he died. A tragic loss of a man of God and children had to watch his father just fall through the ground and die and fall hundreds of feet down to the ground. We don't know why God allows that to happen, but meanwhile spares others. All we know is God calls us to trust him. 
There came a time where James' witness had come to an end, but Peter's needed to continue. I want to encourage you with something, and we need to make sure we also do this. We need to be careful that we don't hold on to this world too tightly. Because if we hold on to this world too tightly, we will actually be mad at God for allowing things like that to happen. You need to remember that God is looking forward to being with us in eternal life in heaven. You need to remember that there is an amazing place that is being prepared for us, for all who believe, and that this life is nothing compared to what we're about to receive. Amen. And grief is hard. So I want to say this out of due respect for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones who have gone before you. But every person who has believed in Jesus Christ, they are in a good place right now. They are dancing. They are in the arms of Jesus. They are in the arms of God. They are praying for us. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I truly believe they are wanting you to continue to live for God. They want you to, to enjoy life with God, okay? Not enjoy life for yourself, okay? To make sure we get that right, okay? They, they're saying, don't forget to live. I'm not speaking for dead people, okay? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if, you, if we knew, if we understood what they have in heaven right now, they would want you to continue to live for the Lord. Amen. Amen. It does not mean it won't be hard. There's a time for mourning and there's a time for rejoicing. Don't forget to live for the Lord. Okay? God wants you to continue. Your family wants you to continue. Great things are ahead for us in store. I want to show you some questions that Christians have to answer at their baptism in Asia and other countries. I've seen this for years, but this is, this is going around on, on social media right now. So look at these questions. Before you're water baptized, these are questions people need to answer in South Asia and other places. Are you willing to leave home and lose the blessing of your father? Are you willing to lose your job? Are you willing to go to the village and those who persecute you? Forgive them and share the love of Christ with them. Are you willing to give an offering to the Lord? Are you willing to be beaten rather than deny your faith? Are you willing to go to prison? Are you willing to die for Jesus? Those are some sobering questions, aren't they? That's how serious it is. There's training right now for Christians in China on how to go to prison and suffer while you're in prison. Why? So that you don't deny your faith and hinder your witness for the Lord. It is because people don't deny their faith that those who are far from Christ are actually believing in Jesus Christ. When they see the prisoners, and some suffer for Christ and some don't, when they see those who are suffering for Christ, it's, it's melting their cold hearts, and they're now believing in Jesus Christ. You see, the people who are willing to give their life for Christ, like James and Peter and us today, we don't hold too tightly to this world because we know there's another life to come. Amen. The reality of this is getting closer and closer. I thank God for our security team. I thank God for safety. I thank God that we use our, our wisdom and our eyes to keep an eye on things. I never thought that today would be a day where I have to consider that taking the pulpit in an American church that I would be risking my life. That I would have to come up here and I'd be risking my life to preach the gospel. But apparently that's the day we're living in today. So you know where I stand. I'm ready to die for Jesus Christ. But I thank God for his divine protection and angels. And I have a feeling mine's working overtime too. Yeah. The Lord has protected us. This is our 70th year this year at Calvary. Seven years the Lord's been protecting us. Amen. We can trust and rest in God's divine will. Secondly, we can trust God for divine intervention through divine intercession. We need to come together as a church and we need to intercede together for divine intervention and miracles and rescues for missionaries, for the church, for you and your family. There are things that can't be broken or delivered without prayer and fasting. That's why we've been doing that on a monthly basis in the first of the month, coming together to pray and fast, and one's coming up here in June. When one person prays, one righteous person prays, God hears their prayers and answers. Imagine a righteous church praying. 
what God's going to do. And let me tell you, God has been answering prayers in this place. I'm still waiting for some emails to come through, but I've heard of three stories of healings, physical healings in this church in the past two months. We've heard of people being uh, set free from crippling anxiety and despair. God is moving. We've heard of families being saved in this church. We've heard of, of uh, family members and teenagers and kids and, and adults that have walked away from the Lord coming back to Jesus. And I believe it's because we've been praying as a church together for God to do these things. So we will storm heaven today with prayers of faith, and that's all we can offer. And let God do the rest, amen? And lastly, we can trust God to render divine judgment. I just need to teach this because it's part of the scripture. Seems a little strong and harsh, but we'll let God connect the dots for us today. But what we see at the end of this scripture is God dealt with King Herod. God dealt his divine judgment on King Herod. And I want to just remind you as a church and as a believer, revenge is not yours. Revenge is God's. Right now, we should be praying for mercy upon people and for God to do his will with people's lives. It is not for you to get revenge if someone's hurting you, if someone persecutes you, if someone persecutes the church. There will be justice for those things. And God ultimately is the just God. He's the perfect, fair God. He knows how to judge people. When they're in his hands, he knows exactly what he needs to do, much better than we do. What we need to do is pray for God's mercy upon our enemies, upon the enemies of Christ, upon the enemies of the church. Pray that God changes their hearts. We want as many people to come to Christ as we can because we wouldn't wish hell on anyone if you knew exactly what it was. God will do his divine judgment. And it's also a reminder for us that right now is the day of grace, the word of God says. Right now is the time where we need to get right with the Lord because we don't know when we'll die or we don't know when the day of judgment will be, but it will come one day. And one day we will stand before the Lord and it won't be your mom and dad's faith that saves you. It won't be your attendance at church that saves you. It won't be your giving and good deeds that saves you. It will be whether you believed in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, trusted in what he did for you. And because of that, God sees you as forgiven and saved and one of his children. That's that's the only thing that saves us on judgment day. Right now is not a time to play games either. Right now is not a time to have one foot in the world and one foot in God. Right now is a time to be pure and holy before him because we don't know the day or hour. And there's so many people we could pray for, isn't there? I want to open up my heart to you a little bit, not that I haven't already, (laughs) but I want to share with you a little bit of my prayer list today. These are close to my heart. I want you to know that, number one, I've been praying for God's miraculous and healing power to pour out in here and through you outside in our community. I've been praying earnestly for that. I've been almost begging God for that. I've almost been begging God too for God to pour out his spirit upon us, that he would fill you, that he would pour out his spirit upon you and that you would have that that baptism, that Pentecost experience with the Lord and that he would set you afire to reach those around you. Like if you've never had a, a burden for the lost, that's what the Holy Spirit gives you because the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. And, and when the Holy Spirit comes in you, you'll have a hunger for the word. You'll have a hunger for holiness. You'll have a hunger for the lost. You'll have a hunger for righteous living. It, it changes. Everything changes when the Holy Spirit just floods you and comes into your life. And, and listen, when we, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we receive the indwelling Holy Spirit. He comes into us right away to identify us as the Son of God. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was for greater measure and for continued sanctification. And so we need continued sanctification. We need to be continue, uh, become holy and pure and work and get rid, of the, get rid of the flesh and let the Lord work on us and make us holy. Amen? Sanctification is after salvation. Sanctification is helping us become holy and, be, and living holy. A life we couldn't live without Christ. A life we couldn't live without the Holy Spirit. 
I've been praying for that earnestly for us. I've been praying that we would grow in our spiritual gifts, that we would use the gifts that God has given us in and outside the church. Oh man, I can't, I, there's so many stories. There's so many stories I've been hearing recently where God is telling you, the church body, to do something out in the public and it's exactly what people need. That's the Holy Spirit working in you. That's spiritual gifts in action. And, and, and thank you for attuning your ears and listening to the whispers of the Holy Spirit. Been praying for a greater burden to reach the lost. Sometimes it wanes. Sometimes we focus on ourselves that we don't necessarily think about those around us. I've been praying for an, us to answer the call to be disciple makers. If, if each one of us could just teach one person Jesus and help them follow Jesus, not just by our teaching, but by our example of living, we could change this community. In a few years, things could change around here. I've just been praying that we would capture that. And this one, this one, it's pretty private. You know, I haven't brought this to the church very often, but I've been praying for a financial miracle and intervention to pay off our mortgage here at the church. In, uh, in 2019, 2020, just so you know, and I'm gonna be completely transparent with you, we owed 5.6 million on our mortgage. So I have some good news. We're down to 4.3 million four, four years later. So praise the Lord for that. And look, I know that mortgages are necessary. I have one for my house. It's something that, you know, we borrow money, so to say, to help us find a place and then we pay it off. But I just believe that God's church is supposed to be out of debt. I believe that, that we shouldn't be shackled by this. I'm gonna be more transparent with you now. I want you to know that we pay $31,000 a month to pay our mortgage. That's a lot of money. That haunts me sometimes because I wanna see us use that to further the kingdom. And I get it, we are furthering the kingdom in this building and in our community center and our school. I get it, we are, you're right. You know, you don't have to send me emails, I know. But can you imagine what we could do with an additional 31? We could plant churches, help missionaries, help families. We could do so much more. I'm just, I'm hungry to see that removed as well. I'm hungry to see us get rid of that. And the Lord's always been encouraging me. The miracle is in the house. The miracle is in the body of Christ and our obedience of giving and, and serving and reaching the lost. We're gonna see an increase of God moving in this church. And so not just about the money, I'm talking about everything. Salvations, discipleship, miracles. That It's us, the church. We must trust the Lord and step out in faith and do what he asks us to do. And God has called us, by the way, to be generous now so that we'll be even more generous when we don't have a mortgage. So I've been praying for those kind of things. I've been praying for all this and so many more because then there's personal needs. And so what is it that we need a breakthrough today? Who needs to be rescued? What needs to change in your life? I wanna encourage you. Let's stand together and we're gonna worship and I wanna encourage you to just intercede. I wanna encourage you to actually pray out loud too. If you need to come down here and make a place of worship, and begin to just cry out to God for him to do a breakthrough, a miracle, a divine intervention, a divine rescue. We wanna pray for you as well. If you need healing in this place, we wanna pray for your body to be healed. If you're praying for the salvation of family members, listen to me, there are some really tough situations right now with people. There are some people who, are, who know the Lord. They know they're supposed to be following Jesus and they turn their back on him. They were raised in this church or another church and they've turned their back on God. I'm praying with you and for those people. Let's intercede today, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. You deserve all the glory and praise. All the honor, Lord. You are faithful, God. You're a faithful, God. We thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God. Lord, we make room for you, Lord. We make room, not just today, but every day, Lord God. Strengthen our relationship with you, God. Strengthen our faith, our devotion to you, Lord. Lord, help us to be devoted to you, Lord, in all things. Lord, I pray right now for those loved ones we've been interceding for, for salvation. Oh God, rescue them today. 
Rescue them, Lord, from the grip of this world, the grip of sin, the grip of the enemy, the devil. Lord, rescue them, God. Have mercy upon our loved ones, our neighbors, our friends who we've been praying for, Lord. Answer, Lord, those prayers today. We come together and we agree together, Lord, for the salvation of our loved ones and our friends. Lord, we admit we need you, God. We need your spirit, Lord, to help us. God, would you fill us and guide us, empower us, Lord, to use the gifts you've given us, Lord. Make the gifts known to us, Lord, as we go about obeying your spirit and listening to the whispers, to the leading of your spirit, God, and we step out in faith. Lord, make those gifts recognizable, Lord, and use them, Lord, to bring you glory. God, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to answer the call to make disciples. Lord, help us, God, to see that we can bring someone into the family of God, that we can help people, Lord, trust you. We can't get them to believe, but we can be there to show them the way to Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, that we would take responsibility for the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything you've commanded us. And we know then that you will be with us to the very end. You will be with us, helping us. God, we pray for your healing to pour out in this place. Even right now, Lord, as we pray, Lord, begin to heal the bodies, Lord. I know of needs right now in this room. Lord, would your spirit flood their bodies, Lord, with your healing power. Would your grace flood their bodies and do a divine healing today? In Jesus' name we ask. Oh, Lord, we've been persistent. We've prayed. Lord, we trust you. We ask for your mercy to be upon our bodies, God. Lord, you teach us to take care of ourselves. So, Lord, we will commit to that too. We will do the natural and you'll do the supernatural. Lord, we ask for you to move by your power to heal us, God. God, would you heal our stewardship? Would you rescue us, Lord, from the bondage maybe of financial debt or maybe something that has been passed down generationally, Lord, that we haven't been able to overcome because we need Jesus to come in and change everything. Lord, would you open up the floodgates of heaven, Lord, and pour out your grace, pour out faith, Lord, pour out strength, pour out your power, pour out your healing, your spirit. Lord, pour out on us, God, and help us. Lord, we pray, God, that you would do a miracle for this house and all the houses, Lord, of, of worship. Lord, that we as a church would be obedient to trust you with our finances, to give to your kingdom causes. And that, Lord, that we would first of all seek you, seek your kingdom first, and you would take care of all the other needs, Lord. That we would seek to be righteous first, and you would be faithful to provide in every way for everything, not just financially, God, but even who we're supposed to be with, a companion or a job or a calling. Lord, seeking first your kingdom, and all these things will be given unto us. Lord, would you do a miracle in this place? God, we also lift up not just our church and not just an increased vision for what you want to do in Dover and beyond and in our world, but God, we pray for the finances of our missionaries. We pray, God, for the worldwide church and for the sons of God. God, that you would bless us and help us, Lord. Do divine miracles for our missionaries, Lord. For the churches that we planted, God, in Milford and in Dover and the one we, we helped revitalize in Maryland. God, bless them with your spirit, with spirit-empowered followers of Christ, with disciple makers, God, bless them too. And God, provide the finances and the land and the buildings that are needed. Lord, we lift up our school to you. It's busting out of the scenes. There's no more room. Lord, would you provide teachers that are gospel-centered, that that follow Jesus, that would be willing to teach the next generation to follow you? God, would you provide, Lord, the space that's needed? Would you provide land and a building, God? 
Lord, would you provide, Lord, go even above and beyond what I'm even asking, Lord. Lord, if you need to move us from this piece of land into a new land where a new church and a new school can be, God, let it be done. May we not ask too small, God. But Lord, we pray for the provision for this Christ-centered school that we have. Lord, you know the heart of our school and the board. You know the burden to help teach Christ and academics at the same time. Lord, would you provide a miracle, God? God, you know our hearts. You know that we seek not the praise of man, but your, Lord, your approval. And you know most of all, God, we want to give you the glory. We do all this for you, God. We do this for the one or the many who will come to Christ and inherit eternal life. So Lord, answer these prayers. God, you hear the prayers in this room right now. Lord, would you answer today? Turn your ear towards us, Lord. Hear our prayers. Answer the way you want to answer, when you want to answer, how you want to answer. God, we trust you. Thank you for your faithfulness. You've been here for us all of our lives. The goodness of God, there's nothing like it. We thank you for that. Lord, we believe in divine intervention through divine intercession for a divine rescue, a divine miracle. We thank you, God, that you can break us out of our old ways and our old things and break through things that we couldn't change. You change everything through Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. We give you all the glory and praise. Lord, may we be captivated by this day today. May we not forget the things you whispered to us in this service, the things that you put on our hearts, the dreams, the prayers. May we increase our faith, Lord, and may our faith increase in you for these miracles. We love you, God, and we just continue to seek your face and more of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God glory and praise. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.